Right before Christmas this last year, the Midwest was hit by a severe winter storm. It brought snow, strong northerly winds, and sub-zero temperatures. In Kansas City, the temperature was negative four degrees Fahrenheit, with wind gusts up to 39 miles per hour. Conditions were even worse in other parts of the Midwest. This kind of weather usually doesn't show up here until late January or early February. The worst part of the storm was the frozen pipes. I know of at least three families that had pipes freeze and break. Our church, which meets in a reception hall, had to cancel the Christmas services due to a pipe bursting and flooding the entire place. As a home or business owner, frozen pipes can be a major risk. If a frozen pipe breaks, it can cause tens of thousands of dollars in damages. So is there an easy way to prevent water damage before it happens? Of course. An automated water shutoff system is the perfect solution for homeowners and business owners looking to protect their property. With water shutoff valves and leak sensors, you can monitor your pipes and shut the water supply off if something goes wrong. Plus, there are different styles of shutoff valves that are easy to install. For even more functionality, the shutoff systems we're gonna talk about today can even be added into Home Assistant. Let's take a look at the water sensing and shutoff options from YoLink. We'll go over the features, take a look at what installation looks like, and even explore some automations in Home Assistant to enhance your system. Let's check it out. Hi everyone, it's Ryan with This Smart House. Today we're gonna to check out some water sensors and controllers from our friends over at YoLink. If you missed my last video about products from this company, you can of course find the overview of the starter kit up here or down in the description. Also, a quick thanks to the YoLink team for sending these products over for this video. If you recall, what sets YoLink apart from other smart home tech is their usage of the LoRa communication protocol. This protocol allows for communication in open air between devices up to a quarter of a mile. Plus, you can link devices directly to each other so they can still communicate in the event that your hub is down. That comes in real handy for something like a water shutoff system. That way you know even in the event of a power loss, if a leak is detected, the water can be shut off. Now, if you've been with this channel for a while, you may have seen my earlier video on the Dome Z-Wave water shutoff valve. Fortunately, I've never had to actually use it, but I think the new YoLink system has several advantages over the Dome Z-Wave shutoff system. We'll examine those in the next section. But first, let's take a look at what options we have for sensors. All right, before we get started on the sensors, you're gonna need a hub. You can either build everything from scratch or get one of YoLink's starter kits. The standard YoLink hub is what I have, or you can get their speaker hub. It's similar to the standard hub, but it can also play tones and sounds and send text-to-speech announcements. The only major feature missing from the speaker hub is ethernet. You can only connect it over Wi-Fi. So the first leak sensor we're gonna take a look at is aptly named Water Leak Sensor 1. This sensor was actually featured in my last video. Now you can see it's got three separate water contacts, one on the top and two on the bottom, providing flexibility in its installation location. This is best installed somewhere where water is likely to drip down on it, like under a sink, appliance, or next to a washing machine hose. The top sensor has an integrated cup, so when water drips down, it'll trigger immediately when the water hits the top, rather than waiting long enough for water to accumulate and trigger on the bottom contacts. Now, these sensors don't have an integrated speaker, so you'll have to rely on communicating to your shutoff device, notifications in the app, or pair it with one of the sirens. But it's completely waterproof, and they have a listed battery life of around five years. So the next sensor is the number two water leak sensor. Unlike sensor number one, it's not a self-contained package. It comes with a long, water-sensitive rope sensor that connects to your electronics body using a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. This style of sensor can detect water along the entire length of the cable and set off the alarm. This is more useful if you're unsure of where the leak might occur and you don't wanna wait for it to pool. This sensor is actually equipped with a sounder, so it will emit an alarm if water is detected. Now, unlike the sensor number one, the electronics body is not waterproof. So to protect the electronics from water, the sensor should be mounted using the included hook and the rope should be placed along the path where the water might be. Now this style of sensor would work well around a hot water heater or along a pipe. You can also purchase additional rope sensors and chain them together to increase the length. Now the number three water link sensor is identical to the number two in terms of the electronics and features, but it comes with a different probe. This probe has two electrodes on the end, which can be used for either a precise water sensor or a water level sensor. Alternatively, you can swap out the sensor cable for a compatible float sensor. If you want to use the included cable as a water level sensor, you can set it up as either a high or low sensor. For a high level sensor, place the probe where you want the high level mark to be. The top electrode should be even with the high water mark. The sensor will then go off when this mark is reached. To set the sensor up as a low level sensor, place the probe and the water at the low water line. The bottom electrode should line up with that low level line. And in the app, we need to change the device mode to water exhausted monitor. This way, the sensor will alert when the water is not detected. Now that we know how to detect a water leak, let's explore ways to prevent them. All right, so let's take a look at what options we have to shut off the water. Right now, there are two options available from YoLink for water shutoff valves, the motorized valve and the bulldog valve and controller. The difference is the motorized valve needs to be installed on your water line by cutting into your main pipe, while the bulldog and controller can be placed over an existing quarter turn ball valve in order to turn it off and on. In the next section, I'll demonstrate how these look when they are installed. Both these shutoff valves are battery powered, which I feel is a significant upgrade over the older Z-Wave version that I have that's mains powered. 
This means in the event of a power loss, you can still actuate the valve if either you have it directly connected to another device, such as a water leak sensor, or you have your hub running on a UPS. All right, so let's take a look at the motorized valve. Now this is intended to be installed over a three quarter inch water main line. It has a three quarter inch female NPT style threaded connector on both sides. Now if this is something that you are not comfortable with, you might want to hire a plumber to come out and do, especially if you're gonna be cutting in a tight space. But there are easy options if you want to do this yourself. So here I have a three quarter inch NPT to three quarter inch press on style adapter from Sharkbite. These can be easily installed if you have the right set of tools. It's quite simple. If you just cut into your line in the proper location, clean up the ends, and then these press on and become a three quarter inch NPT style connector. Now on the top of the valve, you'll see a gauge to indicate what stage the valve is at between open and closed. There's also a manual control that requires pulling the handle up before you can manually turn to open and close the valve. Now, I'm not doing a full installation tutorial today, but if this is something that you'd be interested in seeing, let me know down in the comments below. I might be working on this anyway. Now for the Bulldog version. We simply just need to clamp this onto our existing shutoff valve and adjust to ensure we have a clean turn. Now this requires a quarter turn ball valve. Your valve should be in good shape and turn easily. You cannot use any other style of valve with this controller. So included in the box are two different size pipe clamps that go over your existing pipe to hold the valve controller in place. Also included is the adapter that's used to go over the handle of the quarter turn ball valve. This clamps on securely and allows you to have a snug fit when turning the valve off and on. Also included in the box is a quick start guide, four AA batteries, and the Yolink controller. This is actually the part that will communicate back to your hub and other devices. Next, we're gonna use the YoLink app to pair the devices using the QR code on the back of the controller. Finally, we'll go ahead and test the valve controller in the YoLink app. Now I'm gonna leave this running so you can see exactly how long it takes for the valves to actuate, which is around 17 seconds. If you wanna manually control the valve, you can press the set button on the controller that will open or close the valve depending on what position it's in. Now, one disadvantage of this style is that it does require a precise installation to ensure you don't bind up the motor. Those motors are very, very strong and could easily break something if it's done incorrectly. As you can see, when I did the installation, at first I had it extremely tight and that actually almost caused one of the pieces to break. So I loosened it up just enough to allow a smooth motion without it actually ended up moving the motor out of place. So quickly, let's go ahead and take a look at the sensors and the valve in Home Assistant. Now the code I'm gonna show you can be used with any leak sensor and also any shutoff valve. So for example, if you're using the Acara leak sensors, you could use the same code, just adapt it to your particular entities. So let's go ahead and look at what the Yolink products look like in Home Assistant. Now, all of the Yolink products natively integrate with Home Assistant, so you don't have to add anything else as long as you've got the integration installed. Be aware that it is a cloud-based integration, so if your internet is down, it will not function. But I am trying to convince the Yolink team to, to develop a local API endpoint, so that way we can get around having to use the cloud for this. Wish me luck. So our leak sensors are gonna show up as a battery entity, they're gonna show up as a leak binary sensor, and they can also show the temperature of the unit, which is pretty nice. Same thing with the standard leak sensor as well. Then if we go to the water shutoff valve, and this should be the same for either one of them, it'll show you the state. So currently it's on, and then it also shows us the battery levels. Again, this is nice because if the battery starts getting low, you'll definitely wanna swap those out early. So now we've seen what the sensors look like, let's go ahead and see some example automation code that I use in my house. So the first bit of automation is gonna be an alert if any of the leak sensors detect that there's a leak. So here at the top, I have all of my leak sensors listed out. This could be leak sensors from any manufacturer. So I have a combination of both Yolink and my, and my existing ones from Acara. So you can add any of those in this entity list and we wanna go from off to on, or in this case, from dry to wet. It should equate those two, so you, don't, you shouldn't need to actually change those. You can add any conditions, but of course, I don't think I want a condition here. So under actions, I've got three separate notification streams that I've set up. So the first is gonna send me a notification to my Telegram, which is installed on my desktop computers and on my phones and iPad. And if you notice, we're gonna actually use the YAML here. This is gonna be using the data template so we can actually utilize part of the message that triggered this. So in this case, I've got it set for water leak. And what it does is it uses the trigger dot two underscore state dot attributes dot friendly name. So this is a special type of template that can be used in an automation. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take whatever triggered it when it moved to the two state, so in the case of these sensors, it goes from dry to wet, it's gonna return its friendly name, which is the nice simple name of the device. So if this is the laundry leak sensor, this would say laundry leak sensor has detected a leak. If this is a critical sensor, then the water's been shut off, please investigate. So I have my water shut off separate from my notification stream, because in this case, if it's one of the Yolink devices, it's gonna directly shut it off, because it's directly connected device to device. Now I have two different levels of 
leak sensors in my house, I've got the critical sensors and then I've got informational sensors. So the critical sensors are things like behind the washing machine, under the sink, that sort of thing that if they do leak, there will be some damage. And then I've got other places that are more informational like over my sump pump. Obviously, I don't wanna shut the water off if the sump pump's overflowing because that's not gonna help anything. It might be a good idea to split yours into those two separate type of categories. That way you can take immediate action on the things that are critical and then just tell you about the other ones. So then I've also got a notification group set up which will send all, which will send a high priority message to all of the devices in my family. Look for a video on that a little bit later explaining those notification groups. And then finally, I'm using the newly added Google Assistant SDK to send a text-to-speech notification in the event that this happens. So all my devices will get that text-to-speech notification. And if you missed that video, it's right up there in the cards. So in the case of a leak, we'll go ahead and test this by clicking the run button. And we should hear all the devices make noise and I should get straight any chimes in my home. So the second automation I have set up is for the water shutoff valve. So in the event that the water shutoff valve is turned off, I wanna be notified everywhere because I don't wanna end up having issues where I don't have water. So right now I've got it set up that any time that that device changes state into off, it's gonna automatically send me a notification. Again, this is a good backup just in case your devices are connected device to device, so you get notified if the water is off or if somebody accidentally triggers it if you happen to have this set up in one of your interfaces. So again, you can send it to whatever notification that you have set up. The version of the blog post will have the three streams like the other one did. Now you can use this last automation example if you have a system that's not fully cohesive, so you're not using the Yolink solution or you're using or you're using a leak sensor from Akara with a Yolink shutoff valve. This would be the actual shutting off of your water main in the event of a leak. You can combine this with the first and second automation if you want to, but I'm providing this example separately just in case you want to set it up independently. So again, we have triggers based on all of our leak sensors when they go from off to on. And then down here, we want to switch the water shutoff valve. So this is a switch turn off service. And then we've just selected the water shutoff valve state in the case of the Yolink. Now you might wanna put conditions in here. So for example, maybe you don't want the water to be shut off if you're at home. So if you have a presence state group for all of your devices in your house, you may wanna leave this set to, if somebody's home, just send the alert, but don't shut the water off or put an inherent delay in there. Hey, I've alerted everybody, you've got two minutes until the water gets shut off. So, so those are just some quick example automations of what can be used if you have these type of sensors and shut off valves in your house. All right, so there you have it. There's a simple and quick way of securing your house against water leaks. And of course, there are other options out on the market. I even did a video on a Z-Wave option. So this is obviously not the only option you have out there. The great thing about the Yolink system is of course, the sensors and the parts are not that much more expensive, about the same price range as your Z-Wave or Zigbee sensors. Plus, if you combine it with the power of Home Assistant, you have unlimited options as far as how to secure your home. So I wanna thank the team at Yolink for sending all the product over here for me to take a look at for this video. If you'd like to check out anything, I've got links to it all in the description here below. You can, of course, purchase everything off of Amazon. I hope to have some more content coming out from Yolink in the upcoming months. Plus, hopefully, we're going to be continuing our relationship working on some new videos on their website. So, as always, if you do have questions or you do attempt this project, please let me know down in the comments below. Or, of course, join our Discord server. I'd be more than happy to help you guys if you have questions on any specific aspect of this project. Now, if you're in the mood for other DIY projects, I've got a whole playlist right here. And of course, as always, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next video.